Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The retention of strategic teeth below a denture enhances retention and stability, giving the patient a definite functional and psychological advantage. Whether or not to use copings on overdenture abutments is an important consideration for the dentist. In the presence of good oral hygiene, fluoride supplements and dentrifices and regular supervision, many teeth can serve for years without copings. The decision to utilize copings is dependent on several conditions. Caries rate and or susceptibility, the degree of carious deterioration, endodontic condition of the abutments, location of previously placed restorations, use of attachment mechanisms, and need for specific abutment contour. Properly constructed metal copings can provide a degree of caries protection for the abutment tooth. Copings effectively reinforce the endodontically treated abutment and make it possible to restore broken down teeth otherwise unacceptable as abutments. The coping acts as a carrier in the use of numerous overdenture attachments. Finally, metal copings allow the dentist to produce specific abutment contours for retentive and resistance form. The following sequence will demonstrate the fabrication of what is commonly referred to as high coping. This particular coping is used on teeth of sound periodontal condition to enhance retentive and resistance form for the overdenture. The materials required for the initial reduction and preparation of the overdenture abutment are a number 700 tapered fissure burr, a 110 SP diamond, brass shank tapered finishing burr, a high speed handpiece, a low speed handpiece, a latch head for the low speed handpiece with friction grip head, a number 2 lead pencil, a parapose endodontic post system, and a number eight round burr. The unprepared endodontically treated tooth filled with gutta percha is divided into nine segments by outlining with a number two lead pencil. The number 700 tapered fissured burr or a 110 SP diamond instrument is used to accomplish tooth reduction to the free gingival margin. Gross reduction of the tooth should be done in a segmental approach to reduce the risk of fracture. Attempts to quickly section the tooth at the level of the free gingival margin can result in subgingival fracture and make subsequent margin replacement difficult. Gross reduction of the overdenture abutment has now been completed. A brass shank tapered finishing burr is now used for placement of a circumferential bevel. The bevel should be of adequate width at a moderate angle to allow for gold coping design and finish consistent with current principles in operative dentistry. In the presence of existing restorations, which encroach upon the cervical portion of the tooth, it is acceptable to utilize a beveled shoulder, a chamfer, or a long tapered bevel margin. With the completion of the circumferential bevel, attention is now drawn to preparation of the endodontic post. This portion of the tooth preparation is important in terms of tooth reinforcement and retentive form for the coping itself. An appropriate parapost endodontic drill is selected utilizing a radiograph of the abutment tooth. The level of the free gingival margin is noted. 
the width of the interradicular canal is observed as well as the depth to which the root canal will be prepared. The parapost which best approximates the width of the overall canal is selected and the length to which the canal will be prepared is determined. Using the pair post drill in a latch head on the low speed handpiece, a post hole is placed in the tooth to the appropriate depth. This depth has been determined previously by radiographic inspection and should extend at least one half the distance down the canal. This distance may be altered by the presence of bifurcated canals, calcification of the canal, or extreme narrowing of the canal in the apical one half. If necessary, a warmed piezo reamer may be utilized to provide a pilot hole and remove gutta percha without apical displacement. Following post hole preparation, the corresponding para post burnout post is tried in and its depth confirmed. A number eight round burr is used to countersink the opening in the canal. This will provide a broad base for the cast gold post to the core portion of the coping and strengthen this area of the potential core fracture. A tapered fissured burr is next used to produce an anti-rotational lug. The lug should be placed into the area of the greatest exposed root area so as not to encroach upon the lateral root surface. The anti-rotational lug will prevent rotational displacement of the finished coping. The root preparation is now completed and the laboratory phase of coping construction will be demonstrated. The materials required for fabrication of the high cast coping are green or blue casting wax, type 3 hard, a lubricating medium, an assortment of waxing instruments, a wax surveying instrument, and a flame source. After lubrication of the prepared post hole, the parapost burnout post is positioned to its full extent. Incremental additions of casting wax are added to develop the coping contour. In reviewing this graphic, one can appreciate the need for proper coping contour. In order to obtain space for subsequent tooth setting, the coping is waxed with a labial concavity. This concavity will accommodate the cervical portion of the artificial denture tooth placed in the denture. Additionally, an occlusal countersink or dimple is placed in the coping. This provides a definite key for the overdenture under basal loading and helps to resist buccolingual or mesial distal displacement. After initial wax buildup is completed, refinements are made utilizing the wax surveying instrument. It is important that the mesial, distal, and lingual walls of the coping are parallel with a common line of draw between the copings. This parallelism enhances retentive and resistance form of coping, thus aiding retention and stability in the overdenture. It is also important to select a line of survey which is compatible with residual ridge contours in the basal seat area. One should avoid a line of draw with the coping which might provide a difficult path of insertion for the completed prosthesis. A final wax inspection should ensure that the labial cervical wax contour is slightly divergent or prominent. This will allow for proper support to the free gingival margin and reduce the possibility of hyperplastic change or gingival dihiscence in this area. The completed wax coping with labial concavity is now ready to be cast 
utilizing the endodontic burnout post as a sprue. The coping should be cast in a type 3 gold alloy or a semi-precious alloy which will yield good properties for strength and finishing. Now that the high coping has been cast, standard finishing and polishing procedures are followed to complete the raw casting. After cleansing and pickling, the finishing and polishing sequence is followed using these materials. An assortment of mounted stone, a number eight finishing burr, an assortment of sandpaper disc with a mandrel, a series of abrasive rubber wheels, a soft Robinson bristle brush with a metal polishing agent, a chamois wheel with rouge, and a slow speed dental handpiece or bench top lathe. The completely finished and polished copings are finally inspected for fit, marginal integrity, and parallelism. The copings are now ready for cementation and the final impression procedures for overdenture construction can be initiated. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.